So in this lecture, I'm going to give you another example about the, the application of the complex numbers in planar geometry. So now the problem is a little bit more complicated and uh, the theory, the theorem is called the Morley's theorem and it states that uh, the points of intersection of the pairs of the adjacent pairs of the trisectors of each arbitrary triangle ABC are the vertices of an equilateral triangle. So if I draw the trisectors of each angles of any triangle ABC, no matter what is the type of the this initial triangle ABC, the intersection of each pairs adjacent pairs of the trisectors, for example, this part, this line D1, and the adjacent adjacent line, which is another trisector for the adjacent angle B. So D2 and D1 intersect each other at H, and uh, samely the points G and F. And the objective is to show that no matter what is the type of the uh, triangle ABC, the triangle FGH is always an equilateral triangle. So, uh, the first step is that if I can extract the complex representation of co or coordinates of the, the nodes F, G and H, how can I demonstrate that these uh, points are belong to an equilateral triangle. So I shall research a certain condition which shows me uh, using the coordinates of three points that the tri that these three points are situated in a in an equilateral triangle. So this is our first objective in in this problem. So I I will consider for example, a typical equilateral triangle like uh, this one with the nodes as A, B, and C. So, corresponding to each node, as always, I, cons I will consider some complex representations A, B, and C. So if I, can see, I consider BC, the vectors BC and AB, I know that this exterior angle is 2 pi over 3. And I can say that the triangle ABC is equilateral if and only if the vector BC is a counterclockwise rotation of the vector AB with an angle of 2 pi over 3. So, the conclusion for this, if I describe or if I write this equation in the complex representation, I have C minus P for this vector and B minus A for the vector AB. The rotation with a certain angle is the multiplication with a complex number with an amplitude or modulus equal to 1 and an argument which is equal to 2 pi over 3. This complex number will be simply exponential of 2 pi over 2 pi i over 3 and we know that this complex number is obviously one of the cube roots of 1 so this number will satisfy this equation and if I write this equation as this one omega minus 1 times omega squared plus omega plus 1 equal to 0 
given that omega is not equal to 1, we have omega squared plus omega plus 1 is equal to 0. So that this omega will satisfy this equation. If I continue from this equation, the fundamental uh, condition for a, a triangle ABC to be an equilateral one, I will have, if I bring all the terms at the left hand side of the equation, I will have omega times A plus minus 1 minus omega times B plus C is equal to 1. And given the fact that minus 1 minus omega is equal to omega squared, I'll have omega times A plus omega squared times B plus C is equal to 0. And if I multiply two sides of this equation by omega squared, so multiplication by omega squared, and given the fact that omega cubed is equal to 1, I'll have A plus omega B plus omega squared C is equal to 0, given the fact that omega cubed is equal to 1, or omega is equal to the exponential of 2 pi i over 3. So if I, given three complex representations for the nodes of a given arbitrary given triangle ABC, if these complex numbers satisfy these, this equation, given that omega cubed is equal to 1, we can say that the triangle ABC is equilateral. So this is the fundamental condition for any triangle to be an equilateral one. The second hint about this problem is that without any loss of the generality of the problem, as always, I can suppose that the nodes of the triangle ABC, for example, Z of A, Z of B, and Z of C, the complex representation representations of each node, belong to the unit circle. We know that the, the equation of unit circle is norm of z equal to 1, or z, z bar is equal to 1. So that for each node, we will have z uh, of a times z a bar is equal to z b times z b bar is equal to z c, z c bar is equal to 1. Or absolute value of z of a is equal to absolute value of z of b, etc., etc., is equal to 1. This is a general assumption just for simplifying the process of solving this, this problem. The next hint is about the unit circle. This is, this is a very, very important, uh, which which will give me the, the key idea to solve this problem. So, if, uh, if I consider a unit circle like this one, if I uh, start, for example, which, with this point, which is equal to 1, real axis, imaginary axis, this is, this is the complex plane. If I rotate O, the origin O1, for example, this vector, with a certain angle, alpha, I will arrive at the point with the complex representation Z0, which is certainly equal to E to I alpha, because it's it corresponds to an angle alpha which is positive so argument of z0 is alpha and is positive because it's in a counterclockwise 
direction about the real axis. If I mod, if I uh, continue to rotate O zero another time with the angle alpha, I will arrive at the point Z one, which will be e to i times two alpha because the the corresponding angle is 2 alpha, and certainly th this point is z0 squared, because if I raise this complex number by 2, I will have exactly z1. If I continue to doing exactly the same procedure, I will arrive at z2, which is e to i times 3 alpha, it's clear, and it's z0 cubed and so on and so forth, for example, for Z3, etc, etc. If I consider another node, another point in the on the circle, and if I connect this point to the each of the nodes, 1, Z0, Z1, and Z2, like this it's clear that these angles beta are equal and if I consider the angle Z2 A1 I'm observing that this angle is divided by three equal angles so that these lines are the trisectors of this angle. So that, for example, if I start with a complex number 1, and if I multiply each time by, by a complex number in the counterclockwise direction, I'll construct exactly the same scheme as in our prob problem. I we, we wish to, to, do, to do so. So, if we rotate, if we di displace ourselves in the counterclockwise direction, the, at each step we are multiplying by Z0 or by a complex number with a positive argument. But if we consider the reverse direction, the direction in the clockwise sense at each step for example I consider Z3, Z0 cubed at each step I'm dividing by Z0 sorry I'm multiplying the, the complex numbers by the inverse of Z0 or I'm multiplying the complex numbers by Z0 bar because Z0 belongs to the complex, to the unit complex circle so that Z0, Z0 bar is equal to 1. Z0 will satisfy the equation of the circle. So that, and we know that the multiplication by Z0 bar is exactly the, to add up the same as to add up the argument of each complex number with a negative argument which is the argument of Z0 bar which will be minus alpha which is negative. So multiplication by a complex number with a positive argument will uh, give us a sequence of points with the same interval and which are situated in a counterclockwise direction and exactly the same the same thing but, but multiplying each point by a complex number but now with a negative argument will give us a sequence of points in a <coughs> sorry in a clockwise direction and this will give us the basic and the key idea to solve this problem. Now I will consider the general scheme 
of the problem. So the triangle ABC with its circumscribed triangle, uh, sorry, circle, which is a unit circle. So if I draw the trisectors of each angle, like this one and this one. So the interesting point points are this one, this one and this one. And the objective is to show that the triangle F G H is an equilateral triangle for any type of the initial triangle ABC. So the second general step to solve this problem is to extract the complex coordinates of, of the points G H and F. So here is a little bit tricky the, the, the procedure of solving this problem. If I'm interested in the points A, B and C for sure and also these points in order to calculate complex representations of F, G and H. So, if I consider, for example, the point A as 1, and if I consider this points, this sequence of points A, this point, this point, and B, and if I consider the multiplication by a complex number B, for example, at each time of rotation, I have B, B squared for this point, and B cubed for the point B. And I know that the argument of B will be, should be positive. If I rotate in the clockwise direction, and I multiply, for example, by C at each time, but I know that the argument of C now is negative. This point will be C. Sorry for the, for the video. This point will be C squared. And the point C will be C cubed. So what will happen about these two points? So this, the point B, I, I will consider this direction, the counterclockwise direction. So the sequence of points will be B3, two unknown points, and C3. So one approach is that at each step I divide by B and I multiply by C. So, sorry, B squared C. At each step, I'm dividing by B, I'm multiplying by C, B, C squared, and C cubed. But I know that if I multiply by C over B, this is equivalent to the fact that at each step, I add up the argument of C to this number, and minus argument of B. And I know that argument of C is negative here, and argument of B is positive. So that this argument to be add up to this point, to each point, each of the points is negative, certainly. So that we are moving in a clockwise direction. So I'm, I'm supposed to do something to solve the, this problem so that, for example, at each step, rather than mu multiplying by C over B, 
I will multiply by C over B times omega with omega with absolute value of omega is equal to 1 because all the points should be, should belong to the unit circle so that this point will be B squared C times omega this point will be B C squared omega squared and C cubed omega cubed but this point is not C cubed and it should be C cubed not C cubed times omega cubed so Another assumption is that omega cubed is equal to 1. So now I see that at each step I'm adding argument of C plus argument of omega minus argument of B. So with this factor I hope that this number will be positive so that these points are situated in a counterclockwise direction from B to C. So, the next step to solve the problem is that how can I calculate the points now? Sorry, now I know each of the coordinates of these points. How can I calculate the intersection? For example, A, uh, I don't know, A1, for example, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2, for example. If I consider A, A1, B, B1, the intersection of these four, comp uh, these four points are the point, is the point F. So, just a simple theorem it's not a, a, a theorem it's just the, the, the intersection of the the equation of lines for example if I consider this is the unit circle over which I will consider the points P1 P2 P3 and P4. If I connect, sorry, these points like this, the objective is to calculate the intersection point Z. We know that the equation of line D1 is Z plus P1, P2 times Z bar is equal to P1 plus P2. P1, P2 are the complex representation of the nodes P1 and P2. And the corresponding equation line for the line D2 is the same as D1 but like this line. So the intersection of the uh, these two lines is simply z is equal to p1 bar plus p2 bar minus p3 bar which is complex conjugate over p1 bar p2 bar minus p3 bar p4 bar i'm using this fact to calculate the coordinates of f g and h so now if I return to our main finger and if I intersect A, A1 and B, B1 I will have F and using this equation F is equal to 1 plus omega squared B minus 2 C minus 1 minus B minus 3 etc omega squared B minus 2 C minus 1 minus B minus 3 C minus 1 and if I multiply two sides numerator and denominator by B cubed 
c i will have b cubed c plus omega squared b minus c minus b 3 over omega squared b minus 1 so if i replace 1 by omega cubed i know that omega cubed is equal to 1 i can factorize as c times b cubed minus 1 minus b b cubed minus omega sorry b squared minus omega squared over omega squared times b minus omega and at the end i'll end up with omega times c times b squared plus b omega plus omega squared minus b times b plus omega and this is the coordinate of the point g and exactly in the same the same history for the point, points g and h i will write the, the for, final formulas omega squared times b times c squared plus c omega squared plus omega minus c times c plus omega squared and the court the complex coordinate of the point h which is c squared plus bc plus b squared minus bc squared minus b squared c so knowing that the complex coordinates of these three points f g and h can be evaluated using these formulas I should calculate the using our criteria which is f plus sorry f plus omega times h plus omega squared times g and that is simply uh, simplified as bc I will write the final terms which is which will be certainly equal to zero because b and c are not equal to zero and we know that omega satisfies this equation because omega cubed is equal to one and omega is not equal to one so that omega will certainly satisfy this equation this is equal to zero so that the equation f plus omega h plus omega squared g for omega cubed is equal to one is always satisfied so that the triangle f g h is always equilateral without any uh, assumption about the, the initial triangle a b c so this was an interesting theorem in the complex numbers and plane geometry, which so-called so the Morley's theorem. Thank you for your attention.